Hello, and thank you for joining us. The girls you are fixing to hear from have been working hard this summer during their internship at WKU. This video contains information and resources regarding ways to prepare your child for school. School readiness means that each child enters school ready to engage in and benefit from early learning experiences that best promotes the child's success and ability to be ready to grow, ready to learn, and ready to succeed. School readiness in Kentucky is divided into five major domains, social and emotional development, health and physical well-being, general knowledge and mathematics, approaches to learning, language and communication development. For each of the categories, we will discuss ways to prepare your child and discuss activities you can do with them at home. To get started, we will discuss the social and emotional development domain. This is when your child is learning to play and share with others, following simple rules and routines, showing curiosity, learning to explore new things, and learning to work alone. Encouraging your child to practice some of the following skills at home will help them prepare for school. Fastening clothing, putting the correct shoe on the correct foot, tying shoes, washing and cleaning up, following safety rules you have set in your home, preparing for different activities with minimal supervision. Some of the following activities you can practice at home with your child. Let your child dress himself. Let them try to button and zip clothing on their own before you lend a helping hand. You can also encourage dress up play. Have a dress up box available for your child. While playing dress up, encourage them to button, lace, snap, zip, and buckle, and use that over and over again. Another way you can do is get a jacket, maybe from last season, have them to practice if it has buttons or zippers, and have them to practice zipping it up and down over and over again. You can also get a doll. Have them to practice with putting the clothes on the doll. If the doll has any zippers, zipping and unzipping those, putting shoes on the correct feet of the doll. During all of these activities, keep a chart for your child's achievements. Write, I can do it myself at the top. And then, Divide your paper into two categories. On one side, you're going to list the skills that you're working on. So your child knows when they master that skill, they get to put a sticker or a check mark. This will help them see what they have accomplished and what they still have to work on. A couple of good books for working on dressing is What Will You Wear by Nancy White and Froggy Gets Dressed by Jonathan London. These are really good for whenever you are practicing putting on clothes and also whenever you're zipping and buttoning. In the resources section of this video, I have included five links to websites that have activities you can do with your child and some include parent resources and a parent video that walks you through different activities and things you can do with your child at home. I hope all of these are helpful to you when preparing for your child for school. Hi families, my name is Allison Key. I'm a student at Western and I'm finishing my interdisciplinary early childhood master's degree. Today I just want to share with you about kindergarten readiness. So the components of school readiness in Kentucky include general knowledge and mathematics, health and physical well-being, approaches to learning, language and communication development, and social and emotional development. I want to share with you more about what it means for a child to be ready in the area of health and physical well-being. For kids, this includes eating a balanced diet, getting plenty of rest, receiving up-to-date immunizations, receiving regular medical and dental care, and being physically active such as running, jumping, and doing other activities. The first big component for your child to be school ready in health and wellness includes eating a balanced diet. According to the CDC's Childhood Nutrition Facts, children ages 2 and older need to be eating a pattern of food that includes fruits and vegetables, whole grains, fat-free and low-fat dairy products, a variety of protein foods and oils. 
the, um, the benefits of healthy eating are helping to maintain a healthy body weight, consume important nutrients, and reduce the risk of de developing health condi conditions such as high blood pressure, heart disease, type 2 diabetes, cancer, osteoporosis, iron deficiency, and it prevents dental cavities. A healthy diet is also linked to academic success, such as eating a healthy breakfast is associated with improved cognitive function, especially memory, reduced absenteeism, and improved mood. Also adequate hydration, which means getting plenty of water, is important for cognitive functioning in children and adolescents, which is important for learning. The USDA has a wonderful website called choosemyplate.gov that allows you to explore each food group and can find activities for young children and parents. This resource can be found under the health and physical well-being portion of the school readiness handout that's associated with this video. The second component for your child to be school ready in the area of health and physical wellness is getting plenty of rest. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that children 3 to 5 get 10 to 13 hours of sleep per day, including naps, to promote optimal health. In addition to these recommendations, the um, AAP, which is the um, American Academy of Pediatrics, suggests that all screens be turned off 30 minutes before bedtime and that TV, computers, and other screens not be allowed in a child's bedroom. For infants and young children, establishing a good bedtime routine is important to ensuring that children are getting an adequate amount of sleep each night. The next big area of a child being ready in the area of health and wellness includes children being up to date on immunizations and receiving regular medical and dental care. Upon enrolling in a Kentucky public school, you have to provide proof of the following things. The first is a Kentucky Certificate of Immunizations. The second is proof that a preventative health care examination was done six months prior at least to the initial Head Start program or school program. Um, and it has to be done within, also again, within entry to sixth grade. You also have to have proof that an eye examination was done when your child was between three and six years old by an optometrist, an ophthalmologist, and it has to be documented on the Kentucky School Eye Exam form. And you have to present this to your school no later than June, J January 1st of the year that your child is enrolled. The next thing you need is proof that a dental screening or examination has been done by a dentist, a dental hygienist, a physician, a registered nurse, a nurse practitioner, or a physician's assistant on the Kentucky Dental Screening Form. This also needs to be presented to your school no later than January 1st of the year that your child is enrolled. For more information about what's required as far as immunizations and health and dental screenings, contact your school that your child will be attending. The last area of school readiness in terms of health and wellness includes a child being physically active, such as running, jumping, and doing other activities. So the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, recommends that children get 30 minutes at least of physical activity a day. So the types of activities that your child needs are aerobic, muscle strengthening, and bone strengthening. So for aerobic exercises, your child needs moderate to vigorous intensity aerobic exercises, things that will get your heart pumping, and that should happen at least three days a week. Your child also needs muscle strengthening activities as a part of that 60 minutes per day, at least three days a week, and bone strengthening activities that is included in that 60 minutes at least three days a week. For example, activities on bone strengthening, muscle strengthening, and aerobic activities, visit the handout and you'll find lots of different activities that your child can do. I hope this is helpful. Um, please go to the handout and there are lots of resources for you for health and physical wellness. And I hope you had a great day. School readiness is probably something you've heard before, especially if your child is getting ready to go to school. Many parents wonder how they can help ensure their child is successful and kindergarten ready by the time they go to school. What does it look like in terms of your child's general knowledge in mathematics? There are several things that your child should know and be able to do by the time they start school, such as sort and classify objects, identify basic colors, recognize their name, know their general shapes, count up to 30, count sets of objects up to 10. 
some of the activities that you can try at home with your child to help them with their general knowledge in math could be sorting objects in the house, uh, whether it's their toys, whether it's um, maybe snacks that you're giving them for snack time, just anything that, that can help them be able to sort things by size, by color, by shape, by a certain object. For example, he can, he or she can sort um, their blocks by big blocks and little blocks or by, uh, by color, put the red ones here, put the blue ones here, uh, anything that gives them the opportunity to sort objects. It can be by any characteristic or any color. Activities for your child to learn their colors could be um, you giving them a piece of colored paper and having them find an object that matches that color. Talking about colors you see inside your home or around the neighborhood. Um, it could be, for example, when they're getting dressed, talking about their clothes, um, their shoes, um, if you go outside, if you see a car, or anything like that. You can also talk about colors at meal times, uh, talk about the foods that they have on their plate um, or what they're eating. Play an I Spy game. Uh, you can always do it inside or you can do it outside and just say, I spy with my little eyes something red and having them find that specific color that you named. Um, if you're taking a ride um, to the park um, on your way there, you can always have them point to something they've seen of a certain color. Um, when you are grocery shopping, you can always have them, you know, name certain colors as you're getting your groceries or if you go through the produce aisle, having them, um, identify different colors in the fruit and the veggies um, and just reading um, books about colors. Um, some suggestions could be is it red, is it yellow, is it blue um, by Tana Hobbin. Um, Brown Cow, Green Grass, Yellow Mellow Sun by Ellen Jackson. Color Dance by Ann Jonas. Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? by um, Bill Martin Jr. So those are some suggestions for colors. Activities for counting uh, could be having your child count family members. Um, they can also count how many boys are in their family or how many girls are in their family. That gives them the opportunity to uh, count the members of their family. Count things that pass, whether you're outside um, you can count cars that go by, or if you're in the car and you're going by, you can count, you know, how many cars go by or how many buildings you've passed by. Um, so anything that allows them to count. Um, if you go on the shopping trip, um, they can count how many um, things you're putting in the cart. Um, and so that gives them the opportunity to count once again. Um, sort objects um, as they count them. You can give them the opportunity to do that while you're folding laundry. Being able to count, you know, pairs of socks or pants or shirts. Anything that gives them that will help them with counting but also sorting things. Um, so that gives them, you know, both areas in one activity. Um, and then there are some suggestions for some books that you can read with your child. Um, Math in the Bath um, by Sarah Atherley. Two Ways to Count to Ten, uh, a Liberian Folktale by Ruby Dee. Um, From Zero to Ten, The Story of Numbers um, by Vivian French and uh, Ross Collins. And Each Orange Had Eight Slides Accounting Book by Paul Giganti. One Monkey Too Many um, by Jackie French Kohler. 
Activities for shapes can be um, also an I Spy game, um, being able to find um, things that are square, um, and they can find anything around the house that are square, or you know whatever shape that you might you know pick for them to find that gives them a an opportunity to find that shape and for them to be able to recognize that shape uh, other than looking it on a piece of paper. So you can do that or if you're um, giving them an object, you can say, here is the square book or, you know, being able to point things that are of a certain shape around the house. That can also help them with learning their shapes um, as you do things around the house. Um, also, for recognizing their name, um, you can start off by um, showing them how their name is written and being able to do it on a piece of paper for them to be able to um, recognize it. If you have a, a chore chart uh, or any type of um, label around the house that has their name, then that gives you also an opportunity for them to be able to find their name and recognize their name in print. So, and if you don't have anything like that, it can be as easy as you finding a blank piece of paper and writing their name. And it gives them the opportunity to be able to look at their name and be able to recognize it. So, but if you do have things around the house that are labeled with their name, that can also work. These are just a few activities that you can add on to the ones that you're already doing at home to help them have that extra practice in the general knowledge and mathematics um, and to help them be school ready by the time they start kindergarten. Uh, I will also uh, have some extra resources um, with some links that you can have access for them to do more um, activities and have more practice. Um, and I hope this is um, helpful to you all. And if you are already doing activities that are including um, these concepts, continue to do that. Um, I'll always say that they learn best by playing and just always make it fun and exciting for them to do. Um, thank you so much for your time. Hey guys, um, so the part of Kindergarten Readiness that I'm going to talk to you about today is all about approaches to learning. And approaches to learning really just kind of includes your child's curiosity, their ability to pay attention and listen to learn, and then the way that they cooperate with others. And the approach that your child has to learning is really one of the um, most powerful predictors of success later in school. And one of the biggest things to remember for this is that every child is different. Every child approaches learning in a different way. And so it's important to kind of pay attention to what your child likes to do, the ways that they like to learn. Maybe it's through hands-on play. Maybe it's through reading stories. Um, uh, iPads are great for learning, but they're not long-term um, successes. And so it is important that while we may give our kids you know, iPads and apps and things to learn on that. We're also um, hitting those approaches to learning in other ways because they're not always going to have those iPads and things in school. Um, so it's important to kind of get away from those some as well at home. Um, one thing that you can do is make it fun through play. Um, get down, play with your child. Act out. You know, if they're pretending to cook something, get down there and order food from them. Talk about how much the food costs. Um, there's ways that you can kind of build the learning into the play. Um, I do this in my classroom through, you know, ordering items from them. Well, this was $1 and this was $2. So how many is that all together? And um, so, you, you know, just get down and play with them. Um, so that's... Um, through play. Play is the most, is the best way for kids to learn and, um, and it's fun. Um, so it really kind of makes that learning fun. Um, you, once you get a child engaged, you can allow them to kind of lead that learning or that play. And, um, you can do this in ways, you know, just start playing with them and then just start kind of asking some of these open ended questions such as, 
hmm, I wonder why does this work this way? Or what if we tried adding this block here? Would it still balance out? And then try that. Um, so just kind of asking some of those questions that really makes them think about what they're doing. And um, that kind of helps um, build their attention to it. It helps them guide that learning so they feel like it's not so much like a learning activity and it's fun for them. Um, you can also just, like I said earlier, use normal play for learning. Get down and play with the Legos. And, you know, with Legos is not just a building activity. It's great for building and it helps um, build those fine motor skills. But it can also, you can use Lego blocks to make letters. You can use Lego blocks to make sh some shapes. You can, um, you know, stack some blocks and well, how many is this? And what if I add two more? What if I take some away? Um, so just right there with Legos, we built in some literacy skills. We built in, you know, some math skills. And so there's, um, and then communication skills, just, you know, talking to them. Um, so there's lots of things that you can do um, through play, um, really getting, helping your child build that attention span and through play helps the child kind of build that length of attention that they're going to give to a task. And when they get, you know, then when they get later in school, they've kind of built up their attention span to where they're able to pay attention more in school um, for learning. And then also kind of their ability to cooperate with others. And so, you know, it's always important to talk about getting along with others and being a model. Um, being a model for your child is a, is a great, great tool for you. So, um, I hope that um, I've helped a little bit in this video, and then I think I've included um, some links. One of them is um, an NAEYC website that just talks about supporting children, um, your child's learning through play, and then one of them talks a lot about increasing a child's attention to a task and um, talking to your child about attend, paying attention to learn and working cooperatively with your child's teacher to help build those skills and things that you can do at home to help build those attention skills. Thank you and have a great day. If you've ever had a child who is about to enter the school system for the first time, then you've probably heard the term kindergarten ready or school ready. But what does that mean? School readiness means that each child enters school ready to engage in and benefit from early learning experiences that best promote the child's success and ability to ready ready to grow, ready to learn, and ready to succeed. What does school readiness look like in terms of child's language and communication development? There are several things that school readiness model says that the child should know and be able to do. Your child should know and be able to communicate their full name, age, gender, names of siblings, birthday, street address, parents' names, and telephone number. They should be learning to write their own name, use pictures to tell stories, recite their complete home address, and speak five or six word sentences. Some activities that you can try at home with your child to help remember this personal information. Uh, one would be you could create a book titled All About Me for Your Child. In the book, you would write your child's personal information and review, and review this book often. Um, the more that you review it, the better that they will be able to memorize this information. Help your child make a poster titled My Family. Have your child draw pictures. Don't forget to include pets and label each picture with the person's name and relationship. You could play the name game with your child. Encourage him or her to think of something that they like. For example, my name is Ashley, so I might say, A, my name is Ashley and I like apples. That begins with the same letter as my name. You may label your child's belongings with their name. Make your own labels using markers or masking tape. You can use a labeling machine if you have one. Have your child practice reciting the facts by role playing different situations. You can pretend you are a police officer or a store clerk and your child can pretend that he or she is lost. Your child can practice calling home using a play phone. Encourage your child to remember his or her telephone number. For additional practice, you might have your child call home from a neighbor's house. Read books with your child that relate to knowing personal information about oneself. Here are a few suggestions. You could read the book Brown, Trisha, Someone Special, 
just like Dupiola, Tommy, Andy, that's my name, Lester, Helen et al., and a porcupine named Fluffy. Now, the skills listed above are helpful for children to know before entering kindergarten. The indicators included represent the hopes and aspirations for incoming students, not the expectations. Kentucky recognizes that children develop and learn at different rates and times. Not every child will master all of the skills and behaviors listed above prior to, to kindergarten. And these skills and behaviors are not used to determine school eligibility. The purpose of this definition is to give parents, childcare and preschool workers, as well as communities, an overview of the expectations of schools for incoming students and to help families and communities prep their children for school. Kindergarten readiness includes five domains, with language and communication development being one of them. It is very important to promote activities within the home that stimulate growth in the area of language and communication. Parents are the first line of defense and the best resource that we have as early educators to combat deficits within this domain. We must all work together to promote language and communication development in children prior to them entering the kindergarten classroom. You do not have to have fancy toys or items to encourage language and communication development at home. Use things that you already have. You may use the list of ideas previously mentioned or come up with engaging ways to promote language and communication development on your own. There is no right or wrong way to try and teach your child these skills. I hope that something you heard today makes you feel a little more confident in your ability to promote development in the area of language and communication with your child. With your help, the sky is the limit. Thank you and have a great day.